Uh, are we ready? Are we ready to go? Mm -hmm. All right. Five second non countdown. Welcome back to Poutine Politics, Canadian issues served with cheese curds. My name's Adam. My name's Mike. And today, Mike has a very to uh, uh, a topic that is near and dear to his heart, at least currently. Yes. <laughs> Apparently, I love working. So uh, even though I got laid off from one job, I was like, you know something? This whole collecting money from the government thing sounds kind of interesting. Nah, I don't know. Let's go back to work. So uh, I once again took up a job with an organization, not the same job, but a role that I'd previously had with the same organization. And it was contract work, which is independent, you know, supposed to be isolated. And the tricky thing is that, I'll say this right off the bat, I like what I do. I have no problems with anything that this company does or their business model. However, I know that not all business and companies run this way. And I've seen far too often where businesses take advantage of this rule. And more and more businesses are going with this model. Like why pay full-time as opposed to contract? But I'm going to dwell into that. There's two caveats I must, must mention before him. First of all, I'm not going to go into businesses that move to replace permanent employees with outsourced companies. That can be a topic for another day. Oh, like, oh yes. For instance, uh, Bell Canada, rather than hiring uh, in-house people to drive their vans, they hire outsourced. I believe Bell Canada actually still uses in-house, but Rogers, that's a good example. I was going to say Rogers definitely hires the outside contractors. That's right. Yeah. So that's something that's uh, different. I'm talking about a company that hires almost on an individual level that their business model is predicated on them hiring on on an individual level or a, a small group of people mm -hmm. okay and because uh all the regulations are provincial level based i'm going to base most of my arguments and standpoints from the province i'm in ontario because i wasn't going to go through 10 different certain scenarios that's not my style however most are generally the similar or the same to preface this <laughs> In an ideal scenario, why would a company want to hire an employee over a contractor? What do you think? Of it? Why would they want to do that? Well, um, like I look at it from the standpoint of uh, I know what the what the uh, employee versus contractor argument is from the government in the sense that uh, when someone when someone is an employee, the uh, employer, the business owner, has more control i guess over the in, in over what the individual's role is and their hours and things like that whereas with a contract mm -hmm. situation uh well the well the company that's hiring the contractor might have certain stipulations the, the contractor has a little bit more control in regards to their circumstance in regards to the agreement between the two parties. Uh, and so I would think that uh, a business would generally want an empl an employee more so because they would have, they would have the upper hand in that agreement. Yeah. Like uh, another thing is like, if you, they need supervision, you want to have an employee because they need to be coached back, whatever the case may be. Contractors usually aren't core to your business. So, you know, if you've got somebody who's a marketing expert, that's somebody's core to your business. Like that's somebody you definitely need on the payroll, so to speak. Whereas if somebody's emptying your garbages in your office building or in your office area once a week, that's not core, right? Like that's, you know, so that's something a little bit different, right? As far as employee play, player goes. Also, contract work. So let's say you only need you need a job for three months. Yeah, like that's contract, right? Yeah. Whereas this job that's every three months is going to happen every three months down until forever. You're just saying it's three months. And that's a little different. Now the question is, if this is all nice and good, which it should be, nicely easily laid out, why do businesses go towards more independent contract work, even when it doesn't make as much sense? Uh, be because generally, it costs them less money. That's very true. <laughs> Whenever you want to know why business does anything, just it's money. Yeah, it's almost yeah. always always money. It's yeah. very rarely something else. Well, Only in sole proprietorships. Like yeah. if, if if the business owner does it, then maybe not. But that's it. Right. Well, like uh, so again, case in point with clients that I have. Okay, so uh, I look at uh, I look at the construction industry. Okay, now there are plenty of there are plenty of uh, uh, clients I have that they do hire employees because again, having employees, there's a bit more control. There's but there's also more. What do you want to call it? Stability, I guess, in the yep. sense that when you have an employee, you know they're going to show up. Well, generally speaking, you know they're going to show up. They're going to do the job and. You know, it's between the between you know the set hours and and things like that. Whereas 
you know, when you're dealing with a contractor, you might have a situation where if that contractor, let's say, is doing work for uh, 10 other customers, 10 other businesses or homeowners or something like that, you know, you don't have the same control over their hours. But you can certainly save money by hiring that contractor to do a job as opposed to paying your employees because with an employee you've got things like you know you've got to match their you got to match their Canada pension you got to match their EI you got to pay uh, workers comp you you know you know there's just there's certain costs uh, extra costs that you'll have when you have the employee that in comparison to having a contractor even on like a short term basis saying okay I've got this one job that needs to get done I'll hire that contractor for that one job you're going to spend less money, right? And so again, it comes right. down to money. Also, in other things that they can also skirt regulations yep. by doing that. Yep. Um, so if you want to pay people per, as you said, like per box, or like when you were talking about... Um, like the foreign workers and, the, and, foreign uh, workers. and farming and stuff, yeah. Yeah. If you're contractors, you can also do something similar where you pay them per something, yep. per X. Which may not be the minimum wage for that particular area. Right. Also, you have more flexibility. Like if you want to remove somebody, you don't have the same rules that you would as if they're employees. Yeah. Because you're removing the contract. So severance and grievances are much easier to come by. So there, those are really big pluses for businesses, right? Oh yeah. Like with a con- with a contract uh, worker that's not an employee. You don't even have to necessarily give them, you know, like the two weeks notice or two weeks pay or or things like that. They're, you know, depending on the province, they're not a, a contract worker isn't eligible for things like stat holiday pay uh, or overtime or things like that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. So how can you benefit from contract work if you were not the employer and the employee uh, or the contact E, I will say? Why would you want to go with this scenario? How can you benefit from this? Well, you could have multiple. Uh, you could have multiple. You know, quote unquote, employers, right? So yep. you can split your time between doing work for different businesses, which means that if one if one employer decides not to keep you on, you still have other customers. You still have other employers that you are. Uh, that you're doing work for and earning revenue from. You can work longer hours. You can charge more, which means you you as the individual are making more, generally speaking, than say what you would in an employee situation with one business. You know, I, I mean, obviously the, the, the thing that those people have to remember is that when you're a contract worker, well, you're paying for your own taxes, right? Yeah, and, and, like, and oftentimes you can you can actually mer- earn more because you're not paying as much in taxes as an independent contractor right. as you would be as an employee right? as well. You also don't have to feel as loyal. Yep. You don't have to, you know, most people do. You don't have to feel as loyal because if you leave a company, you're leaving it as a contractor, not as an employee. Yep. Right? They have no loyalty to you, so you should feel as loyal to them. And definitely flexibility is huge, right? Like you can choose your own hours. You don't have to work for multiple things. That's... The hopeful, realistic thing, but that's not what actually happens. No, you and I both know that some people do treat them under these guidelines, and there are rules in place in Ontario to describe that. But that's not really what happens. Like, how does this impact the workforce? Like, you get people that are lower skilled, and they can just hire and fire these people as they go. Yes, to circumvent any rule that you put in play yep. that are currently on the books. So I should say, right? Because it gets around the Employment Standards Act, right? Yeah, you just they, they'll literally just do whatever to get around the Employment Standards Act to, to do whatever. These people are, are often treated the same as an employee, even though they're not an employee. Yep. The idea is that an independent contractor is somebody who you're not supposed to treat like employees. So a good example might be somebody who's in the janitorial services. They take up contract work uh, for a business. And then they get bossed around like as if they're an employee. And that's not how it's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to be hands off. They're not supposed to need supervision. So if you're supervising them, that's an employee relationship, employer relationship. That's right. Yep. So that's different. You know, and it hurts working because you don't have the same rights. And you can get paid a lot less. Yep. As much as you can get paid a lot more. Yeah. If you're in a position where it's technical in nature. And your skill goes up, you can demand more money. You can say, "No, listen, you need to pay me more because you need me." And that, and that's the way that's the way it can be in the trades, right? I mean, you think yeah. about you think about someone who goes off to be uh, uh, to start their own business as a plumber. 
Well, when they have their ticket and they go off to be, to run their own business, they can charge a customer, you know, $125, $150 an hour. Whereas mm-hmm. if you are a fully ticketed plumber that is an employee of a business, you know, maybe you're going to get paid, I don't know, let's say on the high end, $40 an hour. Now, that $40 an hour covers all of your taxes and you're an employee, so you're in, you're in a relatively safe position, uh, especially in something like, especially in uh, a trades business. But you do have the potential to make a lot more money in a similar amount of working time uh, when you are self-employed. But that is a highly, I would classify something like a plumber as a highly skilled uh, position, right? Yeah, and, and as skill goes up, the contract goes up with it too. And yep. it, and depending on the industry, and, like in, and some industries are better than others, trades are often actually not as bad as something like uh, media, for instance, yeah. where you get these people that are work long hours and they get paid pittance for what they work mm-hmm. right well that's, and it, that's just that, that's the nature of the job at this point in time well let's What's use important? let's use a, let's use another example i guess um and it's and it's somewhat high skill but it's it's also i guess uh how do, what do you want to call it it's more i guess it's more accessible as it were so uh programming okay mm-hmm. so doing computer programming now i i've heard of numerous people that, you know, whether they're living in Canada or the States or something like that, and they do like freelance, freelance programming and coding and such, and and they're making six figures, no problem. But at the same time, there are plenty of international uh, contractors. There's websites that you can go to to find these people like Freelancer, uh, Fiverr. uh, I know there's a couple of others and you can go and say, okay, I need this kind of a program created uh, and I and I'm looking for someone to do it for fifty dollars, and somebody will do the job. That's right. And the thing is, is with something like that, which is all computer based, you can hire somebody from anywhere in the world, and you're not hiring them as an employee. There is no employment standards or anything like that that's going to protect that person from doing the work and in that case the issue is that the work is going to someone out of the country that is getting paid out of the country that's not going to spend money in our economy and they're doing it for pennies yeah that's something that's very hard like there's no way around it especially for programming and that kind of nature of the business anything that's to do with remote environments the reality is you can pay people pennies and it's a very hard argument uh, not to pay these people pennies to do the job. And it's just it's the same argument with robots and things that, things like that. Until those economies of scale go up, it's going to be hard to avoid that situation. Yep. Now, I'm not going to go too far into that because I'm not I'm not as worried about that. Like, yes, they are taking away from the employee that could potentially be doing that job. Mm-hmm. But I I kind of treat that like that's the technology evolution reality. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like there's nothing you can do to stop that. Yeah. Think about um, think about Uber. OK. So right now, Uber is a business that relies on people that can drive vehicles. However, Uber is also testing with driverless cars. Mm-hmm. You know, th- again, that's an, uh, that is a situation where, you know, every person that drives for Uber is a contract. You know, it's yeah. and, you know, you're driving your own vehicle. You're worried, you know, you're paying for your own repairs and upkeep and and things like that. You have to have you have to have a relatively new vehicle to drive for them. Like your vehicle can't be older than seven years than uh, seven years old to be able to drive for them. So there's always there's always these 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 capital outputs uh, to run that kind of business. And you have no protections. You have no benefits. You have no uh, like, you know, they say that uh, Uber says that they have insurance that will help cover if you get into some sort of accident while you're driving for them. But apparently even trying to use uh, that kind of uh, insurance can be difficult at best. And then at any time, Uber could say, oh, well, we're not offering our services in this area anymore as of two weeks from now, and everybody that drives for us will ha- has no choice. They've, they're now going to be out of, out of work. This just happened with Foodora. They're, they're, coming, they're uh, leaving Canada, beca- and I mean, they're saying that because uh, it's not financially feasible for them to stay in Canada. However, contract workers that were working for Foodora had won the right, I think about two or three months ago, to form a union. Yeah. <laughs> and that that that's the kind of thing I was trying to stay away from because like that that is a well that I can go down um, because I mean that's something that happens all the time it, with you people uh, businesses uh, to deal with humans but that's something 
altogether a little bit different. Yep, that's fine. Um, I'm, hi I'm hijacking you a bit, so let's get back to your points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. You're not wrong, and I will probably go down that well at some point. But yeah, it's the uh, the Walmart to the world that like, oh, you're opening Union. Well, we're shutting down that store and we're opening across the street. Yeah, uh, are you now? Lower skilled workers can definitely impact by it. Uh, seasonal workers get impacted by a lot, mm -hmm. um, although there is some measures in place already. And oftentimes, independent contractors don't have the same rights. Like they just don't. Like they can't go to HR. They can't. They don't have an HR department. You yeah. oftentimes, if you are the person, you are your HR department. Right? That's right. So you don't have those things, and they're supposed to be, you know, held at arm's length. Even though, like, as a part of the fair fairness. Workers Act, they're supposed to be held at arm's length, even though they're not. Like right. they're treated as employees. Yep. Just with a different banner, right? The reality is, is like you think, well, okay, well, how is this helpful to like the overall economy? How does this help the individual person? You're like, well, you know, if it saves a company money, you'll much see it. No, you won't see it. It goes to the rich. That's the reality of it, right? Yep. It's not going to cost you any less because you're not getting paid an independent worker. The rich just got richer. Mm -hmm. Congrats. And Adam, uh, here's a question for you. Sure. Well, We'll close it out on this. Okay. What do you think the government can do to curb poor behavior, I'll say, with independent contractors? What would be some things, measures you'd like to see implemented? What kind of, I guess what kind of poor behavior are we talking about? Poor behavior poor behavior by the contractors, poor behavior by the employers, both? Uh, like uh, The employers, because it's not, uh, I don't believe the contractees are the ones acting in poor behavior, because if they did, they'd just get let go. Well, I think, I think there needs to be something like the Employment Standards Act for contract workers. Now, whether that means that you take the Employment Standards Act or parts of the Employment Standards Act and say this also applies to independent contract workers under these circumstances, then fine. Or if you make something entirely different for them, that would be a start. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think that's one thing that definitely needs to be done. And I think doing something like that would solve quite a few of these issues not all of them obviously but it would do a lot to solve quite a few of those issues mm -hmm. i agree i also would like to see that if you're hiring independent contract workers there should be a special tax put onto your pay that goes directly towards the task force that can also regulate and manage and enforce any guidelines that are out there mm -hmm. it should come off of the employer side not the employee side like i don't think or the contractee side yeah. it should be the contractor yeah because yeah. they're the ones taking advantage. Like, it, very much, I, I believe that the reason why they're going away from employees to contractors is to move the scales. Like, they're, they're trying to pay people less, essentially. Well, and they're, trying, and, they're trying, and they're trying to move some of the liability, right? Yeah, but they're, they're essentially just trying to move. Like, they're trying to make more money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And this is how they can make more money. Well, this, I mean, the, and this has been going on, especially out west in the oil patch, um, you know, oil and gas sector, uh, for a long time now like at least oh, i want to sure. say at least the last 10 years and probably longer where like i i know from talking to coworkers of mine out west um that they've had clients that you know they've essentially been encouraged by the businesses that they were working for to go form a corporation and they'll get hired back as an independent contractor through the corporation and they'll be able to make more money and they'll pay less taxes because they're incorporated and the corporate tax rates are lower however not necessarily telling those people that there's different taxation when you're in a relationship that is like an employer-employee relationship even when you are incorporated and you pay a higher rate of tax as a result. So really what ends up happening is while the parent company, let's say, that they they are getting hired by, you know, might be paying them more to be an independent contractor, they're skirting the employment standards rules. They're giving themselves a position that they can easily drop a contract with that contractor, with that person who used to be an employee, basically at the drop of a hat. They don't have to provide them benefits. And the taxes don't matter because now they're the employer in that situation is not having to pay the taxes for the employee through their paycheck. It's the employee that has to budget for their taxes and for different things like that. So, I mean, they take so much of the onus off themselves when they get them to become a contractor. And and this is why I said that I think the most important thing to start would be uh, something like the Employment Standards Act for independent contractors that are in uh, a situation that is similar to being employed. Yeah, there should be an exception to the rule as opposed to accepting in. Yeah, so absolutely. Like, if you're a contractor, if you want to get out of the Employment Standards Act, 
you have to apply it to the exception as opposed to the other way around. Yep. It may not have to be as robust given certain circumstances, but it should be similar. Another thing is that if a contractor is basically an employee, they should be forced to become an employee. Yeah. Right? Because yep. they are an employee for all intents and purposes, so they should become an employee. Yep. It's one thing, you know, if I say, I need you for eight months, that's a set defined time. Mm -hmm. I need you to work on this project. You're going to get paid X. And that's it. Like, that. that's all the, like, I need this done by this time. If you don't get it done, then we have other considerations. But I just let you go. Rather than, okay, I need you to come in every day from 10 a.m. to, to uh, 12 p.m. every day. Uh, I'm going to tell you your list of chores to do every single day. But you're an independent contractor, so I can circumvent the three-hour rule. No. In, Minimum, that, in, right? that, in that situation, you are definitely not an independent contractor because your hours are being controlled. Yes. Yep. And that's the thing that needs to be... And another thing I'd like to see, if you're in you're in a situation where you're you're doing that, like let's say you want to have an employee come in, uh, sorry, a contractor worker come in from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Okay. That person, because you're supposed to be there, supposed to have no supervision, they can only be contacted outside of those hours. Mm -hmm. Because then then you're going to remove that employee, like you're going to remove all those people, like uh, a good example is a janitor working at, um, let's say at Zaris, right? They're there from like 10 to 1. Yeah. But basically they're there because they don't want to pay an employee of Zaris to do that job, right? right? Yep. Because it's, it's, not, it's not difficult. They don't need a supervision. But they're like, we need to clean up an aisle 7. That's nice. That's not part of, <laughs> that's not part of my job description right now. <laughs> that and it, like even if it is part of this dom description, if he's not done whatever he's supposed to do, too bad. Yeah. Or let's say let's say that's part of the job description to clean up an aisle. No, I'm so fine. It's fine. But if he's off talking to a customer for two hours, the manager of that store can't come up to him and say, "Hey, get back to work." Too flipping bad. Yeah, that's you right. You have to contact the employer, like the contractor, whoever holds the contract, and say, "I don't want you doing this anymore." Mm -hmm. And then they have to renegotiate. And that's the difference. And that's why you'll get a lot of these situations where people are like, well, they're just employees. They're not employees. And that's the problem that you often come is that they're treated like employees, even though they're not employees, they're contractors. Yep. So that eliminates that almost instantaneously. Yeah. Um, and also forcing uh, employers that you can only hire a contractor if the guidelines allow, if your guideline, your work guidelines allow them to get a second job. Within reason. Yeah. And by within reason, I mean, you know, I want you to be available from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Guess what? That person can't get another job. You've no. eliminated them, that person, right? You've yeah. given them an eight-hour window where they have to work. That's well, right. I can't find another job in that eight-hour window. Yep. Sorry. You've eliminated. Like, like, I can understand splits. That's fine. But if you need them working in an eight-hour window at all times and you they can be flexible in their hours, well, guess what? You've just hired yourself an employee. So those are the kind of things trying to get a more robust for seasonal employees. Like seasonal employees are actually pretty good, but there are, I've heard some horror stories from certain businesses, not from all. And it, it, it also affects media employee, media, the media industry and the tech industry as well. Right. Like those are the big. Oh, yeah. Like, well, think about uh, uh, t television and movie productions and, uh, and things like that. Yeah. There's a lot of independent contractor uh, work when it comes to that. Yeah. And I think your suggestion, as far as the Employee Standards Act, would be huge, right? Oh that yeah, could take that could that could just easily replace all that. But you know, that's my wish list. I don't think that it's unreasonable. When we're going down that route of contract work, more and more companies are going to see this makes financial sense. It's going to be better. They're going to do it because they know that the lack of knowledge out there means that they can take advantage. Mm -hmm. Right. A lot of people don't know that as an independent contractor. You're not supposed to get supervision. But oftentimes these places are built with supervision in place. Well, yeah, exactly. Because, so, that, because that's what they're used to with employees, right? Yeah, because they, they've just replaced one with the other. Yep. So, ah, you know, I mean, it's not a big deal, right? Nah, it's fine. <laughs> All right, perfect. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I say. I mean, uh, you know, you, you, you either expand or create an Employment Standards Act for independent contractors, and that's that's the first step. That's yeah, that is sure the, is. that that should be the first step, mm -hmm. and it goes and then it goes from there. Yep. Well, hopefully somebody is lobbying for that, or if they're not, hopefully they're listening to this and they start lobbying for it. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> right. Maybe we should put it on the Rhino Party page. That's right. It's going to it's going to go on it's going to go on to our local constituent page. All That's right. right. That is poutinepolitics.ca. May or may not have affiliation with the Rhino Party in the future. <laughs> Can't confirm or deny. Cannot, can, we cannot currently <laughs> confirm or deny whether Poutine Politic will be running in the next election for the Rhino Party. <laughs> Municipal only. And if you've and if and if you don't understand the joke, you need to go back and listen to our previous episode about the Rhino Party. That's right. <laughs> All right. Anyways, this has been. I guess what would you what would you call this? This would be uh, just a dis- a discussion on contract work, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this has been a discussion on contract work by Poutine Politics. My name's Adam. My name's Mike. And we'll talk to you soon.